Hey everybody, so let's jump right in. You want to turn the power off on your oven first. I forgot to get the first part of this, and I apologize for that, but it did show a code, which I can't remember right now. It's F2H something, I believe. I'll show you on a, a write-up of what it meant. Okay, so this is the actual picture I found, E1F2. And when we find it on the code list, it is keypad cable unplugged. But to get this off for this particular model, you got to hit up on this. There's no screws or anything that you got to undo. You just first hit up. You can usually do it just prying it with your, your thumbs on both sides at the same time. And then you just pull up and then out. And then all those cables would still be connected, but I already undid them. And what you notice is that I marked them because on the board, actually, I'll come right back. I'll go find the board. Okay, so the board here, you'll see the, the white connections are the ones that those cables were connected to. So you see the P18, P25, uh, P23, and P16 and so on. So you just make sure you mark all those cables that way you don't get confused when you're putting the new one back on and you put it in the wrong place. It just makes it easier that way. Okay, so this is the back side <clears throat> of the old keypad. And you'll notice that this is actually all one piece as it goes into there. This this uh, ribbon it, it expands out and you know, these gold pathways go to the, the points on the front, you know, the, the buttons to push. So, I don't know exactly what, what went wrong with this, but I'm pretty sure it's right in here. So the, the pathways just got kind of crimped, and they're not being effective anymore. So, the only problem with that is that, like I said, this is all one piece, so you can't just replace this one ribbon, which would be easy. So you got to buy the whole thing, which is right here. And this was like 175 bucks, I believe. I'll, I'll put a link to where I got it from. Uh, but you know, you can match up the numbers and you know make sure you got the right thing going on. But that's that's the only thing. You're gonna reuse the uh, the board because if you gotta buy this, and that's a whole other thing. Also, just a little note. You see that that burnt mark up in there? That's actually normal. I, at first, I thought that's what broke, but when I looked at the other ones, they all had that. So. I'm not sure what that is, but it is normal, apparently. So all we got to do is uh, connect everything back on those cables, and then put the ribbon part into here, and then put the screws back on that attach this to the keypad, which is five just Phillips head screws, pretty easy, and that's it. Okay, you actually will need this from the old one. You need this little connector part to just put up here on the new one. And that's what actually snaps into to here. Okay, so that was pretty self-explanatory. Um, sorry I didn't get it as I was doing it, but it's pretty easy to figure out. I mean, you'll see the little, the little nodules there that are cut out. So that's all you really need to get in the actual connection is below this yellow strip here and then make sure the black uh, part snaps in which it just pushes down in there and snaps in and then you're good you know just be careful with this ribbon you gotta treat it real delicate you know because these pathways gotta stay uh, connected and not crimped or bent or anything okay so now we're going to put the uh, Phillips head screws in which are right here 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 and there and there, so that's five. So that's pretty self explanatory. After we do that, we'll come back. Okay, we got these in pretty easy. Definitely just barely get them tight, you know, there's hardly anything. So it's sturdy and nothing else. You don't want to over torque that because you don't want to break this board. All right, so now we're just going to go put the uh, cables into connections and then just push it back down in, and that's it. Then we're going to turn the power off. I forgot to mention that actually. First, you got to turn the power off. All 
Okay, another point is if you have a compressed air, just either in a bottle or an actual compressed air machine, clean this off just to get it in a, in a good state because normally uh, everything back here is going to be super dusty. Alright, so you see how it started. I got 25 there. I already put 18 back there. This was the only one I didn't mark because I knew that was the only one where it would go. Uh, so now we've got 23, which goes there. And then 24, which is here. And then 19, I believe. No, that's 24, excuse me. So you see why to mark it because it's easy to get confused. So there's 24, which goes there. And then 27 is up here, and that's this little one. And you just put it on. Sometimes they do need to be pushed a little harder than you might think they do. But they do seat at the bottom. Alright, now that we've got them all back in, we're going to go turn the power back on. Alright, so there's the oven. I'm going to turn it back on. Alright, and so we didn't put it back in yet, just to make sure that we did it right. And, voila, looks like we're working. PF means power failure, so that's what we want it to say, and then we want to set the clock. So, now we're going to be very careful when we put this back in, and make sure that we don't damage this ribbon. Because it's going to, we're going to have to kind of put it in underneath, and then come back up. So you can get that idea, just make sure you be very careful about that ribbon when you're lifting this up and then putting these two legs back in on each side. Okay. Alright, we are back in business. And it does have a little bit more to go down here. I gotta figure out the track on the side. But it is in operation, so it was just the keypad and not the control panel which this, the front side is the keypad and the back side is the control panel, so that's good because I'm sure that control panel is a lot more expensive than 175 but alright, hope this saved you guys some money if y'all had the same issue and you know, it could be similar even if it's not a Whirlpool uh, just, you know, look at your codes and see what it says and just replace that part or you can even repair that part if you're even more in depth with the, uh, the electronics there, so alright, I hope this helped uh, Feel free to hit me up with any comments or questions, and I will see you guys soon.